everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thank you for spending some time with me on this Wednesday. I hope the lighting's going to be okay. It's a sunny day, but it's earlier in the day than I usually film, so I'm not accustomed to this. My apologies if it's a little crazy. And the two German Shepherds next door are just been let out to play. So today I'm going to do some more improv piecing in the sort of log cabiny wonky style. It will be similar to what I did last week, which this was just a concentric kind of log cabin. This week I want to do either a lo log cabin, a courthouse steps, which has like kinds of pieces or colors on opposite sides or the more traditional half log cabin where one corner is one style and the other is the other or maybe both so in this case i want to do add in some different sorts of fabrics on the opposite halves whichever way i divide it in half I have some two and a half inch squares that I have pieced together. And of course you don't have to use two and a half inch squares. You could piece strips of crumbs or triangles or whatever you have on hand. Might try that one week. And use that instead of the um, two and a half inch squares. I just, I have a lot of two and a half inch squares and I think some of you probably do as well. So on half of it, I'm going to be using these two and a half inch square strips, which I'll cut to be more narrow, alternating with the white, which I still want to do because it's, it's just too much going on if I put these right next to each other. Too much happening. Might work if they were all solids, but I'm not doing that today. So I will put white strips in between there and then I don't know if I'm going to alternate the gray and black and white fabrics or do half of a half, so do a quarter in one and another quarter in the next. I'll try several different things and see what I like best. So I probably will make smallish pieces, but several of them to see how they all look in different combinations. I have a piece left over from last week, which I'll use. And then again, I'm going to be cutting these in not straight, not parallel to the edges fashion, but still leaving enough that I don't completely lose things in the seams. So I'll just do these while I'm at it. Hope you are warm and cozy or cool and collected wherever you are in the world. We're having a really cold snap here and the wind was horrible last night. It was really crazy. I was just glad it wasn't snowing with all of that. All right, we've got some pieces started. So in the center this time, I talked last week about maybe putting a print in the center would be interesting. So I'm going to try it with the print in the center, which probably means I'm going to have to do some white strips before I start this part of it. Let's do a, I don't know how, what I should call this. There's probably a name that quilters use for that. People who do log cabins. I don't know. Cornered? <laughs> Opposite corners? I don't know. Then, although I, if I'm doing this in order, I would do the white and then maybe try, let's see how gray strips work here. And then these pieces here. Then another round of white and before I put this on, nope, that's right. And then over here, when I get to this point, I'll come back and we'll figure out what we want to do with the rest of this. If we want to do just gray, if we want to alternate with white, with black, whatever. So I'll get this much done and be back with you. 
Now that I have this much pieced, it's time to decide what I want to do on this side. On the right hand side, I will continue to alternate the white and the scrap strips. But I need to make decisions, even if it's by indecision, what I'm going to do over here. That really doesn't do anything for me. Um, I might also use a lighter gray at some point. Be well, I could do that. I could alternate a darker and a lighter gray here as well. Interesting. And also, do I want to make this white strip, this narrow white strip, sort of a part of this round so that I am doing the strips here before I put on these gray strips? I don't think so. I think I like having that white touching the gray that way but I don't like these two darker grays right next to each other. So I could do the same as what I'm doing on the other side and alternate it with narrow white strips. And then I guess I could do another round of the, nope, need another round of white, don't I? <laughs> Yikes. And then another round of this. And then another round of the gray over here. That's certainly better than having the solid gray here. But let's try it with well, you know, I said I was going to do several of these, so I could do this, and then I'll have it for comparison to something different on another piece. I'm looking at this sideways. I almost kind of need to stand up or <laughs> over and look in the camera. Eh, it's not horrible. Let me see going out how this will look doing this. I know how it looks over on this side. I've done that before. So I know these aren't narrow strips, but they will be once I get them in there. That's a possibility. You know what I'm going to do is go down and get some lighter gray. And this is kind of a warm gray so i'll be back when i have some light gray back with some lighter gray strips so let's see how that works if we alternate those and these won't be so straight i'll be cutting them wonkily shall we say then how does that look Oh, wait a minute. Didn't do that right, did I? Already had a round of that. That's a nice thing about a log cabin. You can lay things out, see how they'll look. Now with that light gray, if we alternate with white, there's not much value difference in that. So instead of the white, I might do that lighter gray as the narrow strips. All right, Karen, get your act together. And then this would go here. And then, of course, we'd have another round going on here. And with more white, but... I'd rather spend my time sewing than laying these out once I figure out what I want. So 
there's not that much difference between that and white, that light gray. Doesn't mean I can't use it somewhere, but not feeling it right at the moment. So I could also, after I put a light white strip on there, I could also do, oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump you, make you seasick there. Let's do this as an alternating bit. Now those grays, I need to be a little bit wider because they're equivalent of these over here. And then I alternate with this. Maybe with light gray in there instead of the white, but or maybe do some of them that way and some of them another. And I'm running low on strips of the right length here. Never fear, I have plenty of strips. Hmm. Another black and white print might be better. This one is kind of busy. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to <laughs> try sewing one this way. We'll see how it looks. Worst that can happen is it's not our favorite, right? All right, so I'm gonna do some sewing in, it's going to be roughly this configuration. When I take it all apart and put it back together, I'm not sure we'll put it back together exactly the same, but let's see how that looks. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, you can see that I didn't quite do it as I had anticipated. I just did the dark and lighter grays alternating. These grays as neutrals serve to allow these pieced scraps to shine. So these are kind of placeholder supporting cast for the stars, which are these scrap pieces. So I like that. I think I am going to, however, do one with, pardon my reach, where I am using these. Now the thing is, I could do this on just one side and then have the darker gray on the other side. Which isn't gonna work quite right with, oh, I don't know that I, is there enough difference there? Maybe enough that it works, so how does that look? What do we think about that? I think this draws the eye too much away from this. So a black and white print, again, might not be too bad if it was a different black and white print. This is so busy it doesn't seem like it. it, almost seems like a low volume print, but somehow the contrast of this large white space with, I don't know, it's just, it's busier than I think I want it to be. Now, if it were, say in place of the narrow gray strips, and then I had the dark strips, still here, then that I think is doable and I think that's kind of fun. And leave the light strips out entirely. Another thing I want to point out that I noticed and I thought, oh, whoops, but I don't care, <laughs> is that I pieced these in order but out of order 
if I were following what I did over here, I've got a narrow separator strip. I have no narrow separator strips here. So it kind of throws it off in a way, but I don't mind it. I'm perfectly okay with that. I could start piecing the rest of it out of order and create something completely different. There are so many choices. It's one of the things about log cabin, even the traditional log cabin, you've got so many choices of things you can do. So I'm going to piece another one of these, except that I'm going to alternate narrow strips of this print over here. And I may do a narrow strip here as well, just to see how that looks as compared to this. More sewing fun for me. I'll be back in a bit. Here is the finished block. And I like this one. I kind of like this one. I prefer it to the other one that I did today because this adds more character, I think. Makes it look more fun. This gray, with just grays over here, it looks a little more somber, which is... I guess, good contrast with what's going on over here, but it doesn't really add to the whimsical, fun nature of it. So I like having this, these narrow black and white print strips in there. If they'd been wide, I don't think I would have liked it. It would be too much going on here, distracting too much from here. The other thing that I might do is to maybe make these dark gray strips a little narrower because this is a dark attention grabbing gray it may overpower what i have over here and this is what i want to be the focus of the block so i'm glad that i have a bright print in the center but i still want to have the eye the attention go more over here than here so i think i could make these narrower which throws the weight of the block, both, I suppose, literally in reality and visually to this corner. And that's what I want is to accentuate these. So I think this one, for example, might be a little narrower. These are probably okay, but I want to accent this, put emphasis on this. That will do it for today. Next Wednesday, I think I will continue sort of like this, but I'll be using the crumbs that I have from all of this. See what I can do with those so that we're using up as much of our two and a half inch squares as we can because we don't like to waste fabric. On Sunday, which I'm going to start calling Miscellaneous Sunday, I will be doing a demo video of how I use Adobe Illustrator to do the diagrams for my quilt patterns. I posted a couple of days ago on Instagram just a photo of me working on the diagrams for the Feynman Lives pattern and commented that I used to do it in Word, the diagrams in Word. But now I do them in Illustrator and they're so much easier. And Connie asked me to expound on that a little bit. And I decided it would just be easier to do a short video. Well, maybe a longer video. I don't know. So that will be Sunday. I'm also planning to do a demo video, video on how I use Procreate to help design quilts. Back here. I hope to see you all back here again. And in the meantime, as always, of course, be well, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. <music>